So what you're looking at here is a, a Firefox OS device. This is one of the ZTE devices. You can tell just by looking at it that it's um, a relatively affordable smartphone. It's not using really expensive parts, and that's sort of the first thing that you notice about Firefox OS as a piece of technology is that uh, it can run on relatively underpowered devices, which means it's a natural fit for the next two billion people that are coming online, people who are not going to look like the first two billion people. They're not going to be starting their first experience with a smartphone at the $700 price point. You know, one of the things we asked ourselves when we started building this is, can we build a smartphone OS that's going to serve as many users as possible? And that meant really pushing hard on performance and memory usage so that we could put it on these more economical devices. Now, having said that, it still interacts like any other smartphone. You can see I've got a lot of apps installed, um, and the apps that I've got installed are the things you'd expect to see. So you've got social sites there, you've got games installed, and of course, you have the Firefox browser, which starts up quite quickly, like you'd expect on a Firefox OS device. The amazing thing for me, as, a, as someone who looks at the technology side of it, is that everything you're seeing here is built of the web. So, if you use a, an iOS or an Android device, there's a web browser on it. In fact, under the covers, many of the apps are actually built using HTML5 technologies. Um, but the story is that they're all native applications, and if you buy an app on iOS, you can't carry it over to Android without having to buy it from a different store all over again. Because these are web apps, if you acquire an app here, you should be able to use it anywhere there's a web browser. And buying it once should be enough to make it portable for you uh, on other devices you own or on other devices that you borrow from somebody else. And in terms of where you find those apps, uh, the data here is a little sketchy, so we'll see if this works. Um, we're also announcing our own marketplace here. You can see demos around the booth. If I can connect to the marketplace here, you'll see it come up. Uh, and this marketplace behaves much like we'd expect other app stores to. So there's a variety of applications in there, all the stuff you'd expect to see. There's games in there from EA Games. Disney's got stuff in the store already. Twitter, Facebook, AccuWeather. The kinds of apps that you'd expect to see in any app store are here. The difference is um, we don't need to control every aspect of that interaction. So if you're an app developer, uh, submitting something to the Apple Store, the Google Store, uh, is great. You, you write an application and the checks start rolling in, but you can only interact with your users through that store. Uh, here, we want to make it just as easy for you. If you want to use our payment methods, they're built right in. We can even do things like carrier billing because a lot of people in the emerging markets are not going to have a credit card. So if you want to buy an application, it's going to have to come through their existing billing relationship. But if you want to do your own thing, that's fine too. Um, if you want to interact directly with your users and not go through the store, or you want to invent some new way of making money uh, through your application, we're fine with that. We don't need to control it. We just want to connect users with applications that they're going to enjoy. And the last thing I'll show you here is that uh, on top of the marketplace for actual apps that have been discovered, uh, designed and submitted and reviewed, we have this dynamic app search so that if you've got a temporary need, let's say you know the Oscars were on last weekend, let's say I'm a big fan of the Oscars, and let's say I remember how to type, I can just do a quick search and it'll go out online and find web applications out there on the web that can be custom tailored for Oscar coverage or whatever else I happen to search for. And if I'm interested in one of them, I can tap it and sort of launch the app as a, a one-time thing. So even if I hadn't thought to download this app ahead of time, if it's something that I'm interested in, it's really easy for me to jump to it. And then if I decide I do like the app, I can also add it to my home screen. Uh, but it gives you this ability to have these flexible single-use applications that just aren't possible on native platforms because they can't take advantage of the full power of the web. This device, as I mentioned, is a, a really quite affordable device. The nice thing about the web is because it grew up on desktop PCs, which have been evolving so much over the last decade, um, the web can really scale up or down. So what you're seeing here is very affordable hardware, but Firefox OS can run on top-line hardware. And when it does, things like fully immersive 60 frames per second 3D video also become available. You can be playing 3D games. We've got demos around the booth. And you can do things like WebRTC, 
open interactive video and audio chat um, that's possible because we're building on the same technology platform that we use for Firefox desktop and Firefox for Android. So that's a quick run through.